kept church and we do DJ say, um, prepare your hearts. Isn't that what the Lord always wants us to do? He always wants us to prepare our hearts. We don't just prepare our hearts when we have to come to church. We, we're supposed to be preparing our hearts always before him all through life that's what life is about having a heart that is pliable and and ready to hear from the lord amen so welcome again welcome welcome um it's a pleasure to be with you my name again is sister cheryl johnson and um i have the privilege of um uh, being a part of Promises Kept Ministry. Um, uh, wand what a wonderful uh, ministry it is. Amen. So without ado, I'm going to get into the word of God. Because if ever we needed a word, we need it today. Amen. Every day is today. And, um, you know, I, as I was preparing this message really this is coming out of um I, i'm really just talking to you today really um just in conversation with you um these are some of the things that um the holy spirit has been teaching me um you know, sometimes you think you know the word but then are you really applying the word you know it's but we're always in God's school, so to speak, the school of life, right? And these are just some of the things that God has been showing me, especially coming out of this pandemic, um, um, uh, concurrently with this pandemic, my mother was very ill and um, very challenged mentally. And this was going on since the ending of 2019. Um, and it's just a lot of things. Thank God my mom is doing well today. And it's only by the mercies of God. <laughs> the mercies of God. So I, I want to share with you um, that, you know, hearing from God is, is so essential. Um, it's, it's good to read the word, but we should never read the word as if it's like a textbook. We, we need to employ and, 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 and call upon Holy Spirit to reveal to us from the scripture what he has to say to us. And what he has to say to you from a particular scripture could be entirely and totally different from what he's saying to me. And that's good. That's okay. Uh, that's how it should be. And also to share with you that um, uh, hearing from God can be an adventure. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes with adventures, um, there are highs, but then there are also lows. If you think about when you're on a, um, um, like a Ferris wheel uh, in an adventure park or you're, you're on a roller coaster, you know, there are highs and then you have to come down low. And, but with God, um, those lows are not to defeat us or destroy us. It's to make us better. And um, many times we have to go through those low places um, in order uh, for God to, um, for us to hear God and for God to elevate us to where we need to be. Another thing that, um, and this is my introduction, another thing is that God wants us to know how valuable we are to him. We're very valuable. Um, you know, God 
God sent his, his son to die in our place, to die for us so that we could be one with him. That's a place of intimacy, a place of um, 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 being one with him. And therefore we, we hear him, you know, the Bible says the sheep know his, the sheep know his voice. And so um, uh, as we go through life and as we're looking towards what God has for us, you know, we, we're, we're coming out of this pandemic um, now, thank the Lord. And I just pray that we're coming out uh, the, of this pandemic with a lot of lessons that have been learned because we're gonna need um, uh, to, to, to depend on those lessons. Those, those lessons that need to be learned coming out of the pandemic are essential for where God is taking us. And um, so I'm just kind of sharing a little bit of what the lessons I learned. And I pray that they'll help you. And they'll um, help to propel you forward. You know, God wants us to value us value he wants us to to see ourselves as he sees us and when we are able to do that god is able to use us in mighty ways in ways that are beyond what we could ever think or imagine and um i just want to share some of the steps that we could take i'm going to share a lot of scriptures with you um, steps that we can take um, towards maturing in God. You know, we're always maturing in God. <laughs> you know, if you ever get to a place in God where you think, oh, I've arrived, you know, I got it, I, I got it together. Guess what? God is going to come with something, something that's going to kind of shift us, take us off our comfort, out of our comfort zone um, so that we can move on to the next place that he has um, for us in him. So Psalms 119 verses 9 to 16. I'm not going to read the entire um, set of verses. But I want to I want to read the first, and it says, "How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word, the word of God." And you know, when I thought about the the word pure, I think about um, when you think of the word pure, you think of the word uncontaminated. You know, I also wrote down innocent. You know, and that's how God wants us to be. He, you know, there's a scripture that says he wants us to be um, 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 wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, right? And, you know, when you think of, uh, of a dove, when you, say, when you think of harmless, you think of innocent and, you know, that purity. And that's how the Lord wants us to be. Um, because when we're like that, we can see what he sees. We can hear what he is saying. Um, very essential. And guarding, he wants us to guard our hearts. You know, we really have to be careful how we expose ourselves. And there's so much stuff going on now on the internet and, you know, I'll tell you when last I really watched television. Um, because there's, you know, we have to guard our hearts, right? With my, verse 10, with my whole heart, I seek you with my whole heart. When we know, and how can, you know, sometimes you think, how can, how can I really seek God with my whole heart? Well, here's the, here's the deal. Seeking God with your whole heart is very possible because now in this dispensation that Jesus Christ has died and shed his blood for us so that we can become one with him, we're one with him. And so his, 
he's he's feeling our heartbeat we are feeling his heartbeat we are one with him and so we can come to him with our whole hearts with my whole heart i seek you let me not wander from your commandments let me not wander you know sometimes we wander <laughs> without even realizing it wander you know we're wandering oh not just w a n d e r but w o n d e r you know the holy spirit just told me that <laughs> so so wandering it's it's not a good thing to wander sometimes our minds take us places that we really shouldn't be going and we have to reel it back in reel back in this mind this mind has to be it's a good servant but it's a horrible master this mind and so we have to constantly reel in our minds and and make it subject to the word of god verse 11 i have stored up your word in my heart stored up that's a key phrase there stored up you know in order for us to be maturing in god we have got to feed on the word of god and what happens when we feed on the word of god we're we're storing it up it's like food it's spiritual food that's going down into our spirits and at the right time holy spirit will brands so that we can use it um um for the betterment of his kingdom and for the um and and for the uh, for our lives to be blessed and then at down at the very bottom of these last verses it says i will meditate and and fix my eyes on your word with constantly meditating and fixing our eyes see the god you know god knows that you know these ears and eyes need to be fixed they do then let's look at hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 and um actually i started it before verse 14 um and it says here and i'm going to i think this is from about verse 1 and i'm going to skip all the way down but it says for every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to god you know believe it or not we are all appointed to act on behalf of other men in relation to god 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 has called us priests and kings as well. God has called us priests and kings. And um he wants us to be able to offer up to God sacrifices and of course is the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving um when we don't know what to do because that's why it's a sacrifice of praise it's it you know i don't feel like praising god there's nothing to praise god about but he says he would he wants us to offer up sacrifices and of course the greatest sacrifice we could ever offer is ourselves to god because he wants us as a living sacrifice unto him and then it says i want to jump down to verse 11 it says about this which is about everything that he has said about the priesthood and about the order of melchizedek or Mel- melchizedek um that jesus is, was of the order of melchizedek he says about this we have much to say and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing we're talking about maturity now 
many of us, and I learned this, as I said, during the course of my mother's illness, that I had become dull of hearing. Many of us have become dull of hearing. And, and it's like the Lord, Holy Spirit is saying, listen, wake up. For though by this time, you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. Basic principles. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he's a child. I want to read this from another um, version. Because you have become too dull and sluggish to understand. God wants us to shake off that sluggishness because he wants to speak to us. For you should already be professors instructing others by now, but instead you need to be taught from the beginning the basics of God's prophetic oracles. You're like children still needing milk and not yet ready to digest solid food. So I, I, I sense like the Holy Spirit is saying, you know, it's almost like I hear him pleading with us that he wants us to move on from the basics, from the basic foundational stuff, faith in God and you know, repentance from dead works and all of that. He wants us to move on. You're like children still needing milk and not yet ready to digest solid food. For everyone, for every, sorry, for every spiritual infant who lives on milk is not yet pierced. And I thought that was very interesting. Not yet pierced. And when I looked at what that meant, let me see if I can find where I wrote that down. Not yet pierced means not of pierced. You're thinking of being nailed to the cross. We're, 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 you know, we're not yet dead to ourselves. That's how I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting. It is for the mature whose spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. Do you want to perceive he heavenly matters? Do you want to know and, 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 and get a, a, a revelation of heavenly things? We have to move on to eating solid food, e eating meat, the meat of the word. And they have been adequately trained by what they've experienced. These are the mature now, adequately, ad ad adequately trained by what they've experienced to emerge with understanding of the difference between what is truly excellent or right and what is evil and harmful. The Lord is teaching us here to move on. Now, how can we move on? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a little faster now. How can we move on to maturity? We I, I believe we have to revisit. Sometimes, you know, you have to go back to go forward. So we have to revisit some of the basic foundational principles of our identity in Christ. And I wanna take you to Romans six verses six to seven. 
and it says, we know that our old self was crucified with him, that's Christ, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. We know that our old self, what is the old self? The old self is the sin conscious self. That, that was our, our sin consciousness. The, as, the part of us that was that Adamic nature. It said that Adamic nature was crucified, nailed to the cross with him in order that the body of sin, there is a body or there, there, there is something called a body of sin, that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. What does nothing mean? No more, doesn't exist, brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. My brothers and sisters, if yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any brothers on, but my brothers and sisters, this is who we are no longer. We are no longer sin conscious. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no slaves to righteousness. And isn't this what Paul was saying before? That in order for us to move on, we have to get a revelation. And this revelation is in is it it's it, it, it's it's revealing the righteousness of God that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the revelation he wants us to have. For the one who has died has been set free from sin. How can we make how can Paul make this any plainer to us? We are no longer tied up and, and entangled in sin. We are no longer that. We are in the righteous, we are the righteousness of Christ. We are slaves to Christ. We are one with him. Everything that he has is ours. And now we can have that access to God. You know, when it says come boldly, to the, to the throne of grace. That's, that's why we have that boldness because we are one with him. We no longer have to, you know, try to beg and, 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 and figure out, try to get something. We're one with him. We are free from accusations and condemnations of the enemy. We are free from striving to earn favor, that favor that would, you know, which is what a lot of times um, there are some denominations that, you know, you have to say uh, 10 holy um, um, Hail Marys or you have to, um, you know, pray how many times a day, you know, the, the Muslims, you have to pray how many times a day and in order to gain favor with God, no. As a Christian, as a blood-washed Christian, we no longer have to strive like that. We are already one with him. And our, in, uh, uh, we don't have to pander and beg to advance in him because our souls and our lives are one with him. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? So really what we need to be doing So really what we, sorry about that. Really what we need to be doing is we need to be asking the Lord some questions. Lord, what does it really mean to be free from sin? Can you, can you enlarge that for me? Can you um, um, reveal that to me? And he will show, he will show, he will reveal. Hebrews chapter four, 
and it's a you know it's a long chapter so but there are a few things i want to read hebrews chapter 4 says verse 1 therefore while the promise of entering his rest still stands let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it Sorry about that. Yes. So let us fear. No, we, we're not talking about fear that is a, a being afraid of. But let us have that holy um, reverence that we would fail to enter the rest of God. Because it is in his rest that we are able to access the promises of God. It's in his rest. I'm not going to read for sake of time all of, all of that verse, the, all of that chapter, but I would, I would say very strongly that we need to go back through, each of us need to go back through that chapter, Hebrews chapter 4. And then it says in verse 11, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall short so that no one may fall by the same sort, sort of disobedience so listen remember that the children of israel there is there was a there was a a a, a, a rest of god that came um, that brought them into a physical promise which is the land of canaan a geographical place the children the, the the children of israel and you know i i was looking at some notes that i had made and the children of you know I, i've mentioned the word wander before w-a-n-d-e-r that it's it's very easy to wander wander off it's very easy and the wilderness, which was, it, you know, when they were trekking from Egypt um, to the promised land, Canaan, the wilderness that they passed through for 40 years, that wilderness is really a place of wanderings. <laughs> yeah. And that's where their unbelief took root. That's why... I think it was, I think the, 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 script, the scripture says that none of those people that left, that were actually um, those, those, those persons that were in Egypt and came into uh, the wilderness, none of them made it into the promised land. It was only the, 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 the younger set of people, the children, the, that, and, you know, like the Joshua's and the Caleb's and so on. That, that made it into the promised land. And it's because of their unbelief. Do you know that when you wander, you go off in whether in your, usually it's in your thoughts, you stray from the word of God. It causes unbelief to come in, doubt, fear, you know, all of these kind of things, and it can take root. So the choice for us, my friends, it's either a faith rest in God or a works righteousness, because that's what they were, um, they, 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 they were doing. They wanted to work their way towards God. They wanted to, and, and that's what we're still doing. Uh, some of us, and a lot of us, even as Christians, still do today. And this is what happened to me in my progress. I realized that even as my mother was ill, 
I wasn't, I was praying almost like I was begging God to bring her out. Not praying, believing, and trusting. There's a difference. And so um, um, let us not, as we go through our, 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 our various um, days or weeks or months or years, let us take up that walk of faith with us. Let us not leave faith by the wayside. I had a dream actually, and, and, and I'll, I'll just um, kind of, um, explain what the dream, I've, I've felt the dream meant. It's like leaving faith on the roadside and, and trekking up the mountain to God. Because when you go up a mountain, it's, it's, you're going to be with God. And, and sometimes many of us do that. We're praying to God, but it, it's not out of faith. It's out of fear. And God wants to do a new thing. He wants to do a new thing in us. And it starts with faith and trusting in him. Do you know that God trusts us to trust him? I want you to write that down because that's something that the Lord spoke to me. He trusts us to trust him. So when we get to those challenging places in our lives, we can employ our faith. Our faith wants to work for us. And this faith walk is, is, is not, it doesn't come out of going along an easy road. Many times this faith walk comes in the difficult places. It comes, you know, when you think of Caleb, when he went uh, he, he, he went to spy out the promised land. He came back contrary to what the, the, some of the older spies said. The older spies says, oh, you know, there are giants in the land. And, oh, you know, we, we can't take that land. Josh, uh, Caleb and Joshua came back and they said, no, we're well able to take the land. That's what a faith paradigm causes us to, 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 to do or, or to have. That we can do all things through Christ who, who, who strengthens us. Remember, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And as we think about moving on as, as this pandemic passes, moving on with the Lord, not just for ourselves, but for others, there are other people waiting on us to encourage them. So the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And so we must be deliberate and intentional about employing the word of God and therefore doing the will of God. It's very, impos it's very possible, as I said before, to waver or, or fail in our faith walk. But guess what? Just get back on the faith walk. Just repent and get back on. Just let's ask the Holy Spirit to align us. And here is a little bit of what I said to the Holy Spirit. I said, search me, O God, and know my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I, this is some of, this, some of the words that I used as I was trying to get back on the path that God, uh, the faith path that God wants all of us to be on. And so I, 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 I also heard the Holy Spirit saying, posturing is very important posturing ourselves before the Lord. We have to posture ourselves before God. You remember what Psalms uh, chapter one said? Let me just get my, my Bible here. Psalms chapter one. Was, was, is an example of, of posturing ourselves before the Lord, right? 
Psalms chapter one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's, that's so we, 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 we don't keep company with the counsel and, and take counsel from the ungodly. Nor, here's another posture, nor do we stand in the path of sinners. That's number two. Number three, another posture, nor do we sit in the seat of the scornful, but our delight is in the law of the Lord. See the word, you see it coming, it's coming back full circle. We, 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 the, the word of God is constantly encouraging us to get in the word. And, and as you know, we get into the word by, uh, uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that knows how to, 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 to take us through the word of God and, and, and to give us what we need or what he wants us to have. Amen? But we also must posture ourselves before men. We have to posture ourselves in the context of our, 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 our work life, in the context of our, um, our, our neighbors, how we live with our neighbors. We have to posture ourselves with how we even um, live with our families, our, 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 our close families, husbands, wives, children, grandchildren. You know, God wants us to posture ourselves and posturing, to posture gives us a sense of a mental or spiritual attitude. It's really righteousness when you think of the word posturing, having a right mental and spiritual attitude towards God and towards, uh, uh, and, and towards mankind of, of, of the atmosphere that we're in. The same way we would operate um, at our workplace, obviously, it's not the same way we would operate in our homes. And our attitudes determine our altitudes. So let's, let, let's ask ourselves a question. Are, are we at rest? Are we resting in the Lord? Another question that came to me is, could it be that our gifts the gifts of the spirit are not activated, are not being, you know, activated because we are not resting in his finished work. That's the finished work of the cross. When he said it is finished, he's done it all. He's done it already. We just need to tap in to what he has already done. Tap into the Holy Spirit. So there is a rest waiting for us. And that rest is where we are going to find our inheritance, what God has for us. And that inheritance, once we, when, when we come into our inheritance, then we are able to do the good works that God has called us to do. And so as I finish up here, let us remember that if our faith, when you read Hebrews chapter four, it tells you that our, their faith, the children of Israel, their faith was not mixed. Um, sorry, the, the good news that they heard, the message that God was giving to them was not mixed with faith. So we have to constantly remember that, that we have to mix the word of God with our faith. And God gives us our faith. It's God given. And that's what is going to propel us and, 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 and be a catalyst into the power and promises of God. So let us not be defeated when we, when we go through like a waiting period. You know, many times we're waiting on God, but you know, God is waiting on us, by the way. But many times we're waiting for God to do these big things and he has promised us many things 
But we don't sit and wait and, and moan and groan and complain because that is actually defeating us getting into the promises, uh, realizing the promises of God and getting into our inheritance. But what we should do is make use of those disappoint any, any disappointments or waiting period that we have. Use it to our advantage. God will turn everything around for us because he's relying on us. He's depending us, on us to bring the kingdom. Bring the kingdom to the hurting, to the lost, to some of our family members. You know, he's depending on us. Amen. So I pray that this these few words and i'm sorry please forgive me i went um about 10 minutes over but i pray my prayer is that this word will propel us forward and 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 and, and cause god to be pleased with us these are these are are, are wonderful tools that the lord um, taught me and I, I, I pray that it was a blessing to you. God bless you. God and bless now, you. Yes, amen. And now yes. I, I would like to hand over to our next minister. I believe this is the person who will um, uh, take us into the offering and, and giving of our offering. Thank you. This is Minister um, Avilis. We are going to be doing Leviticus 27, verse 30. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. For anyone that would like to give their tithes or offering to Promises Pet Ministry, Please see the screen with the information, or you can use the cash at Promises Pet Ministry or PayPal at Promises Pet Ministry. Now we're going to take a few moments to listen to our offering song. The best ways that we can prove that we love the Lord is by giving. Amen. So we're going to sing a song about giving, and it's got some hand motions, and I want you to join with me, okay? Will you do that? Here we go, watch me. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Help me out now, here we go. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give. And it will come back to you When you give Give to the Lord Give in love Give in faith Give with joy And a smile on your face Give as the Lord Has given to you How you give Is a reflection of your Gratitude So give And it will come back to you Good measure, press down, shake it together and ride it over again. And it will come back to you when you give, give to the Lord. From your heart, give your best. Give unto God and you will be blessed. Don't be stingy and don't be tight. Learn from the widow. Press down, shake it together, and ride it over again. And it will come back to you when you give, give to the Lord. Thank you. 
Minister Ephetaya, who will be providing us with the closing prayer okay. for today's service. Hello, this is Minister Deborah, and I will be giving the closing Can prayer for today. Him? Father God, we just want to thank you. We want to honor you for the word that was brought forth for Jesus. Thank you for Sister Cheryl, Father God. Lord, I pray, Father Lord, as we continue to grow and mature in you, Father God. You make us more sensitive to your word, more sensitive to your voice, and more sensitive to your presence in our lives, Lord God. I pray for every woman that is on, Lord Jesus, that you pour out your spirit, Father God, in a new fashion, Lord God. For we, all we want to do, Father God, is be who you have called us to be in its total, Lord Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.